Welcome back to you to the Catholic Buzz podcast. Thanks for joining us again today. We're on episode five uh, already, so thank you for continuing to send your questions in to our email address and watching this podcast or listening to it if you're listening to the audio only version. My name is Father Daniele, and I'm not alone here on the Catholic Buzz. I'm joined by my two favorite people. Over here to my left is Josh Sullivan. Josh, Hello. welcome back to you. Nice to Thank see you, you again. Yeah. Nice and of course, here. over to my right is my designated driver, Matt Van Milligan. <laughs> Matt, welcome to you. Hello. Yeah, nice to see you guys again. We just had the May long weekend. Did you do anything? May, May 2-4. Yeah. Uh, they opened up camping. So not, not camping, sorry. They opened up fires outside again, finally. So we're going for a hike. We went for a hike and um, we were able to have hot dogs, have a little campfire, and then, you know, we're like, come back and hike. It was nice to be outside, let me tell you. In the real world, you know. Yeah, outside. for sure. My whole neighborhood smelled like fires, like <laughs> campfire. Yeah. You know, so I think people were really excited. <laughs> and, and I live like in the city. You yeah. know, like, uh, I don't know, you live out in the yeah. dunes? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just that with the nice weather, it's just nice to, to be outside more. And, yeah. yeah. It's so true. Actually, the weather has been really beautiful lately, and lots of people celebrate it. Like, I know uh, they closed down my street for the entire long weekend on Memorial Drive, uh, so people can just walk on by the lake. Yeah. You know, like, it's beautiful. So people have been outside enjoying the beautiful weather. Uh, I awkwardly drove down a part of the road that was closed, <laughs> and I, I didn't realize there was just a small little sign that said "road closed." Oh gosh, I, I turned around quickly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm well, still they, embarrassed about. Is it. that so they can keep social distancing? Because there's probably so many people trying to get to the waterfront. Yeah, and I don't mind it. I think it was a good idea for them to close the street. No, for sure. People for go sure. out, and you can get around town without going down that street. There's no sure. major businesses on that street that are open right now that would be affected by it either. It's yeah, nice I, I usually take it to go places yeah. so you have to reroute but you know it was nice to see people out and about walking yeah. and yeah. getting right? some oxygen yeah uh, yeah <laughs> getting some oxygen yeah. and um they opened up golf clubs too which is really <laughs> exciting excited, i right? am excited about that to get out and just just to have activities to be outside and you know what i mean like so to true. be outside i'm i'm worried as we start watching numbers go up that they might close things down quick but um I think right now it's kind of nice to be outside. There doesn't make sense to me if you can social distance properly. Yeah. And I think that's the problem is um, my sister sent a meme out that said, you know, um, basically along the lines of, okay, we're going to relax some conditions of social me messaging, I mean, so distancing. social distancing. And then the response was, no more COVID restrictions. <laughs> like, yeah. no, that's not yeah. what this is. This is relaxing slowly some things, you know. And so listening to that, it's not that there isn't any restrictions, it's that there's something. So now we can go golfing, still social distancing in place and all that stuff. Yeah, I saw something similar online that said, uh, we're relaxing the restrictions because they have room for you in the ICU now. So yeah. make smart <laughs> yeah. decisions. Yeah. <laughs> so that really like hit home. Yeah. You know? yeah. I was like, hmm, that's, a, yeah. that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The long weekend. Um, Lots. Lots of people busy. You you call it May 2-4 weekend. May 2-4. Why do we call it that? Because it's the weekend normally that people finally get out of the house and are able to enjoy their cottages probably with a 2-4. Right. And so so uh, I thought that this weekend was, I'm not this weekend, but this uh, episode is perfect for drinking and drugs and what the Catholic Church teaches about it. Because one of the things we're known as Catholics is, you know, the Christian faith that is allowed to drink, mm. right? Yeah. And so I thought this is perfect uh, when you mentioned it. This is the perfect weekend to talk about that. So that's what we're doing today. We're talking about the Catholic teaching on alcohol yep. and drugs. And drugs. All in one episode. Well, we got... I can't believe it. It's yeah. great. It's <laughs> crazy. We have a new pot store opening up in North Bay. Right. Yeah, and so I saw that in the local newspaper, and that's going to be an interesting thing. On that note, I just want to point out that we have a beautiful, our taste tester today was donated these beautiful brownies, homemade. Uh, <laughs> I love the fact that someone made you brownies for this episode. I know, this is great, eh? I love it. And so, just to be clear, they're not pot brownies. We'll find out in a couple minutes. <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're no, regular, not. real, deep Fudge brownies. They're so moist mm. and so succulent. They're so nice. You know what made me think of that, if I, if I may? Yeah. Um, you know, like, one of the things people do is have potlucks, you know? And even churches, they have potlucks and stuff. Mm. Now, the marijuana is legal, 
and well, there's could edibles and stuff. Yeah, you have to be really careful at potlucks. I think it would be similar though, if you're thinking about it, like you have an alcoholic punch and then you have a non-alcoholic, like people, even in, during a church potluck, you don't have an al not necessarily have alcohol, yeah. Yeah. an alcoholic punch bowl, oh, unless you're labeling it. But that's part because even though it's legal, it's not legal for kids, right? So it's still sure. only legal for those over a certain yeah. age. So that's how I'm picturing potlucks happening from now on, like a table <laughs> with like nut-free, <laughs> gluten-free yeah. marijuana brownies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So that's that's how potlucks are in 2020. Yeah, now. yeah the that's little it. cardboard sign businesses yeah. are going to be just exploding. Like, that's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay, uh, so, so where do you want to start with this, Josh? I think the big one is how come we're allowed to drink alcohol? Mm -hmm. I think that's the big question. I, I, like, why are we allowed to drink alcohol? But I know that we're not allowed to get drunk. So, what's the difference between having? Mm -hmm. Uh, like Jesus, we know that Jesus, you know, first miracle was turning water into wine and stuff. So obviously alcohol is allowed. Yeah. But what's the difference? Why can we have a drink or two? But I think the line is at getting drunk. Or So where is that line, I guess, in the Catholic faith? Where is the line of this is okay to drink this much but not that much? It's going to be different for every person, I understand. But where do we judge that level? Yeah, I think that's good. Everyone refers to that scripture passage. Yeah. Like, well, Jesus' first miracle was providing wine for his friends, you know, and he did. He, the, the wine had run out at the wedding and he provides this wine for the party, right? Which was actually better wine than what yeah. was being served. What's not in that scripture passage is that everyone was drunk, right? That everyone was yeah. like uh, out of their minds and Jesus condoned that. And Jesus yeah. was like, right on, uh, everyone's drunk right now. So I'm gonna give you more wine and just to, to push it past a certain boundary. So that is, that, that is a fair question. Why are we allowed to have some drinks and, but only to a certain point. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's noteworthy that the context of that miracle is, is at a celebration, it's at a wedding, it's at, um, so there's, there's nothing wrong or there's nothing kind of like morally reprehensible about, you know, en enjoying festivities, enjoying celebrations, celebrating with, you know, a glass of wine or having, having a glass of wine as, as a social activity. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And I, I think the rule of thumb is always that, you know, God has given us, we all have dignity, that's, yeah. that's okay. God has given us an intellect, God has given us will, and when anything starts to compromise our intellect, our will, let's say compromise our reason, mm -hmm. that's when yeah. we start getting into big, big trouble. Yeah, it, it, it becomes a moral problem because you're, you're, you're not in moderation, you're, you're being immoderate or you're... You're, you're drinking to a point where you're impacting your faculties, impacting your ability to make you know, sensible decisions. That's right. Yeah. So, if we, if, so if we're drinking and we're at that point, um, let's say I have a drink and then I'm at a barbecue because we're now allowed to you know, maybe barbecue outside, not get together more of the groups of five or whatever, yeah. but mm -hmm. we're, we're barbecuing outside. I have a drink, I have a beer. I'm a big guy, so a beer does not affect me at all. You know what I mean? Um, if I haven't eaten all day, maybe two beers, I start to feel a little bit of the alcohol. Is that okay? At what point do I say, no, that was too much? Or what point do I say, maybe that's a sin, I maybe need to confess that? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, at what point does the church say, I mean, it's a, it's a fine line and I understand it's different from everybody. I mean, I'm a big guy and so two drinks for me doesn't really affect me. I know that I can have two drinks and not be there. Whereas in, um, you know, for a smaller person, let's say, that hasn't eaten all day or whatever, a half a drink could send them off the deep end. You know what I mean? Um, and so where is it that fine line? Is it So it's when it's disabled our faculties? Is that kind of like we're not able to make clear choices? Or um, when we start to feel the buzz, that's kind of when we should shut things down? Or, you know? I, I think lots of people, or every person, I should say, should figure that out for themselves. Yeah, because yeah, like okay. you say... Some can have three beers and be in, and yeah. feel fine. And it also depends, I think, what you're doing, right? Yeah. If you're eating a large meal with a glass of wine or whatever, uh, it's not like an empty stomach, yeah. you know. But I, th I think that's I think everyone should know their threshold. Yeah. Between where where does our uh, where where does it begin to alter our reason? Where can I not reason like I normally do past a certain point, right? So if I'm starting to feel lightheaded yeah. or whatever it might be, I think that would be 
a good place to stop. Yeah, and if, if you don't know where that line is, probably err on the side of dis discretion and kind of ease into the shallow end. Um, I remember um, when I was in university, I... Um, oh, we're getting a university started. Yeah, no, no, I, <laughs> <laughs> here it comes. No, um, when I lived in Nova Scotia, um, in Nova Scotia, it was, it was very sociable um, to have a few drinks every now and then. So I could always tell kind of at the end of the year, my, my tolerance was a little bit higher than, you know, I went home for the summer, worked construction like nonstop for, for two months. My, you know, my metabolic rate changed. Right. Um, so coming back in September, I, I had to be careful one or two drinks in and I was like, okay, I've, I haven't done this in a while. Yeah. I need to, I need to pull back on the reins a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. For sure. And I think, um, we have to talk about the virtue of temperance when, yeah. when we talk about alcohol, right? Uh, because we're to avoid anything in excess, yeah, right? And that's what the virtue of temperance is, to, to really have a nice balance. So that's, that's to avoid lots of things in excess, whether it's food, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, tobacco. I think the catechism talks about tobacco, mm -hmm. uh, alcohol, like things like that. Like a anything in excess is is not good. So I think when we've you know when you've eaten so much that you just feel like yeah. you know um, that's too much. That's way that's that you know. So next time you're like no no you're kind of watching what you're eating. Same thing like you're saying with drinking. You're kind of monitoring that. Uh, you're watching where where your limit yeah. is. Sometimes it changes depending on yeah. you know. I'm sure it's much lower now yeah. <laughs> than when you were in university, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, but I think that's important to say that that. It is a virtue. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And I think too, like we part of that becomes, um, that's where alcohol. I find, as with anything, it can uh, things that like alcohol that lower our inhibition, like lower our faculties a little bit, and even food for that matter. Because one of the things I've been studying recently is that carbohydrates and stuff can actually make you feel good, release a little bit of dopamine and those kind of things. Um, all that stuff can be very addictive. And so it's, you're chasing that feeling. Of sometimes for alcohol, it's, it is dulling the senses. So you're not thinking, maybe if there's something that happened in the past or whatever else, and you don't think about it once you've had a couple of drinks. And so it's easy to suppress the memories or suppress these things. Sometimes it's, you're just after that feeling, you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, the same with carbs. Car like you're, you're eating, you, you eat to an excess uh, of certain amounts. I mean, like being at home with COVID, um, mm -hmm. That can happen at night sometimes, especially if you're feeling depressed or whatever else. A lot of times if you're depressed, you're eating a lot of snacks. A lot of people do anyways. And um, that can give you like a dopamine release. And so you're chasing this high, you know what I mean? And that can very quickly lead to addiction. Yeah. And so that's, that's the, I mean, when we're talking about alcohol, addiction is going to potentially enter into that conversation. But also when we're talking about drugs, addiction can enter into that. But there's not, it's not just drugs or alcohol. There's other things out there that can lead to that addiction. It's always chasing that high, yes. right? For sure. I think anything created by God can yeah. be used in, in the excess. right way yeah. <laughs> or in the wrong way. Yeah, that's you right. know, not, not just booze or, or, or drugs, you know, but I think anything. Look at, um, I don't know, life itself. Mm -hmm. You know, we can abuse life. Uh, some people... Uh, <laughs> or thrill uh, seeking or whatever yeah, yeah. Or, or even sex you know yeah. like yeah. sex is uh, is a good creation by god but people use it in a wrong That's way right. like there's lots of things created by god that can be used in the right way or in the wrong they're way they're beautiful and the church totally condones but if used in the wrong way for sure normally i find too that line is a lot of times when you lose control Mm. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. So like um, talking about sex, sex is made for a purpose. And if you're using it for the proper purpose, then that's the way it goes. Alcohol could be a great drink, mm. especially for celebratory and all those kind of things. And used in the right way, it's okay. But then when you overuse it or you, you know what I mean? Like those are the times where it goes wrong. Yeah. St. Paul tells us, don't drink water only. Take a little wine <laughs> yeah. for your yeah. stomachs. <laughs> yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. But he says, take a little wine for your stomachs. He's not saying... Take a you lot. know, drink a case tonight because you're having a celebration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that being said, how come if that's the case? So we're allowed to have a little bit, like we're allowed to have a drink or two as long as it's within reason, but not get drunk. How come I've been told you're not even allowed a puff of, let's say, weed or like one small brownie or that kind of thing? Is there... What's, what's the limit then? Can we have a puff of, of, of weed, technically? Or does that... I have some... I have Are some, you uh, offering? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, I, I, can, I can offer some of the solution because I actually had that question, but go for it, Matt. Coming back to what Father said about the, the catechism saying that 
um, anything in excess is, is probably a moral problem. Yeah. That, that even, even a good thing taken to excess is, is not a good thing. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that everything, every single thing in moderation is good. That yeah. you can, like, you know, kidnapping in moderation is not good. <laughs> like, you, you, can, you can pick these things that are, like, in, intrinsically problematic or just, just not, not good for you. And, and while well, alcohol, um, you, can, you can kind of uh, discern a dividing line between, like, the proper use of alcohol um, in, insofar as it contributes to, you know, a social situation or a festivity or um, other human activities. Um, I don't know if you can necessarily do that with with other kinds of, of drugs or other types of behaviors, and I would say, yeah. I would say that uh, a puff of weed falls in uh, in that category. When, when I looked into it, this is actually the reason I brought it up was because it was actually a conversation that we had with my family over a brunch, and we fell on two different sides. And the part of the feeling was, well, now that it's legal, we should be allowed to do it, but that wasn't. Half of my family said no because the church says drugs is bad. And I was saying, well, myself and, and somebody else was saying, no, no, but, but drugs are bad because they're illegal. So now mm. they're legally okay. We should be allowed to have them. And so there's two, two things there you can get into, and I don't yeah. want to get... The one big discussion mm. is legally allowed doesn't... Legally right doesn't mean yeah. morally right. For right? sure. And that's a big... There's thing. lots of immoral things that there's no law against. Yeah, right? that's right. Um, off the top of my head, I would say adultery. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's no law against it. No. But it's immoral. <clears throat> um, so, yes, the fact that it's legal, but that, I'm glad you said that because lots of people, that was their understanding. It's, e- it's bad because it's illegal. Yeah. Right? Now that marijuana in Canada is legal, people say, oh, okay, well, now it's okay. I'm not breaking the law. But there is an immoral side to using it. You were talking about just like one puff or whatever. Mm-hmm. That alters your capacity. Um, it, 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 it alters your capacity to reason, mm-hmm. right? It gives you, uh, it changes the way to think clearly. That's right. And that's, that can happen with no. just one, one puff of, of marijuana yeah. or, one, or a simple use of drugs as yeah. opposed to one bottle of beer or one glass of wine. Yeah, when I looked into it, I saw so for me, I, I wasn't satisfied with the answer of no, the church says it's wrong because the church has 2,000 years of beautiful experience. Mm-hmm. And if you ever hear the excuse, the church says so, that's why you need to believe it, there's normally an actually defined answer that defines what, why the church says this. There's actually a long list of reasons because they got 2,000 years of experience. So um, I looked into it. Alcohol affects you by percentage in your blood. So if, you have, if you're a big guy, you have one beer, the percentage in your blood is very minimal. And so because of that, it doesn't have hardly any effect, or if any effect, on your state of reasoning as well as your faculties. However, that's why, though, a bottle of alcohol to a small person, like someone that's half my weight or even smaller, that one bottle of alcohol is double in their blood. Does that make sense? So it right. could affect them a lot more than it would affect me. However, THC is the main component and the main active ingredient inside wheat. And so there is no way, the way THC works, I had to look this up because I wanted to understand it. THC attacks, not attacks, but grips your receptors in your brain. It doesn't just float through your, like it it goes for your brain and attacks your brain, not attacks, it, it attaches itself to your brain and affects your faculties of reasoning. It, it gives you, so to some people, it gives you a feeling of ecstasy or of uh, enjoyment or euphoria, just kind of a laid back. Some people, it actually has the opposite effect. It, it, it makes them very paranoid and scared and thinking about things. But that THC, doesn't matter how much is in your blood, it's attaching itself to your receptors, and that's the problem. So alcohol is just flowing through your system <clears throat> in a percentage-wise. It has to be a certain percent to affect your reasoning. Whereas in THC, even the smallest puff, a half a puff, is going to affect your faculties no matter what because it attaches to your brain for a minute, 30 minutes, yeah. an hour, it doesn't matter. And that's why they say like you can have no THC in your bloodstream when you're driving. You can have a certain percentage of alcohol in your blood when you're driving mm-hmm. because THC affects your faculties. But alcohol at a certain percentage, I mean, and at 0.8%, I mean, 0.08%, right? Yeah. yeah I think it's what, zero, yeah. 
point zero five now. Zero point five. Okay, yeah. whatever. I mean, that's good because yeah. I I, rem <laughs> I remember back in some days having a couple of drinks and blowing into one of those things uh, as as one of those tests. You know, you got one of those little breath. Not by the cops. Not by the cops. <laughs> <laughs> and so blowing into one of those to have just to see, you know, and realizing mm -hmm. like I'm blowing a point three uh, point zero three or something. Like I am quite under the legal limit. But there is no way I would drive right now. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so realizing, like, wow, people drive after this fact is kind of scary. Like, I would not get in the car right now. Yeah, I so. think I think on a practical level, for sure, that that alcohol has a, a, a metabolic intermediary, or like yeah. your your body metabolizes it yeah. um, at at a certain rate. That so, my drink of choice. Um, I like I like a nice scotch, but if I'm if I'm pouring a nice scotch, or if I'm <laughs> spending the money on a bottle of scotch, um, I'm going to pour that an hour before I start drinking it, so it you know aerates properly. I'm going to take two hours to drink yeah. this glass because I I really want to enjoy it. Um, and there, yeah, a couple things to say about that. It's that I'm I'm drinking it at a rate that's slower than my body is metabolizing it. So my enjoyment of it is prolonged, um, but it's not it's not affecting me. It's not affecting my capacities just because. Yeah, I'm able to metabolize it faster than I'm drinking it. Um, also, uh, the fact that if I'm taking a puff of something, that's the desired effect. That's the thing I'm going for. That's what it's been manufactured to produce. You, you want the the high. You're, you're you're partaking in that activity. Is you want you want that whatever's happening in your brain to happen in your brain um, with a nice glass of scotch. Yeah. That um, that that's not the experience. That's not the enjoyment. There's there there are a whole other, uh, uh, yeah there are a bunch of other kind of experiences that tied up with for. it yeah. and not only that I'm being responsible to kind of mitigate what might be the negative experiences um, by taking such a long time to drink it. So what about those people? So now now this kind of gets into a good category then Matt of what if you're <laughs> taking mer medical marijuana yeah. or let's just say drugs in general? Is it why are like Morphine. I had a migraine a little while ago and everything else. Went to the hospital, they gave me morphine for it. How come I'm allowed to have morphine that gives you a bit of a, a feeling, but I'm not allowed to necessarily... Like, it's, it's wrong, it, but it's right, some yeah. situations. I, I, yeah, and I think, I think if, if we're introducing... I think we need to clearly distinguish between medical right. use of marijuana and recreational use of, of marijuana. Gotcha. Um, because THC, you're able to extract byproducts from... Uh, marijuana yeah. uh, and cannabis, and uh, that that have a specific medical application. Yeah. That, um, yeah, and, and I think it, it complicates the ideas. Like the church thinks that marijuana is good, or the church thinks that marijuana is bad. I think I think uh, even even when we had um, the bishops kind of speaking out against the the Canadian Conference of Bishops speaking out against the legalization mm -hmm. of marijuana in Canada, it was it was with regard to recreational use of marijuana. Mm -hmm. For um, sure. I think, uh, yeah, uh, so we if, don't need to get into all the things that medical marijuana does, but I think in, in a lot of situations, like in very specific conditions, it's maybe a better option than a lot of opioids or a lot of highly synthetic um, narcotics that people are taking uh, for conditions. But then your, um, your discussion of the good of the use is tied directly to kind of its medical outcome. It's, it sounds like you're, you're, what's coming to mind is something a priest said to me. I remember asking questions about very, something very specific, and he said, what's the intent? Yeah. And so what, like, when it comes down to whether it's something is a sin or not, like talking about the whole thing about stealing bread to feed your family because you don't have any money, like all that. Like, again, yes, yeah, stealing is wrong. What's the intent? So, like, what's the intent of taking the marijuana? Is it to chase the high? Because yeah. really, that's the only purpose for it, other than medical use marijuana, or like morphine, or like opi opioids, crystal meth, all that stuff. Like, what do you do? You're trying to escape something. You're trying to chase a high. You're trying to. Why are you <clears throat> drinking? Are you drinking yeah. to get drunk? So, if you're going to a party with the understanding that you're going to get drunk, that's wrong versus if you're going to a barbecue to have a drink or two and then you might have a third drink and then you cross the line a little bit as long as it's not meaning to as long as like you realize that that was your threshold you know does that make sense is that, am, am i kind of you know, hitting somewhere close for sure uh i'd like that is that what you would say i'm just thinking of let's say teenagers yeah. young adults or even maybe adults who have asked me before what's wrong with smoking a little weed and watching Netflix, or smoking a little weed 
and playing video games. I'm not going out. I'm not interacting with anyone. Yeah. I'm sitting in my living room. Uh, yeah. Is that what you're going to say? The intent of it? Or what would you say to someone who's, who says that? Uh, well, what's, what am I doing wrong? I'm just smoking a little weed and going to watch... Uh, I, gonna, and going to yeah. play Call of Duty or, or so whatever. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 w I would say that, that yeah, uh, qualifying things solely by intent is, is problematic. Yes. Because okay. you can, yeah, you can... Um, yeah, uh, stealing things because, you know, someone you love wants them. Oh, I'm, I'm intending they're good, but yeah, I'm yeah. doing something yeah. that's, you know, but, but not it is, good. <laughs> so what are you chasing there? In that case there, what are you trying to do? You are trying to specifically alter your faculties to have a different experience, right? Does that make sense? So you're taking, you're taking yeah. drugs uh, to have a different experience of Call of Duty, to have a different experience of Netflix. You're taking drugs to make yourself feel calm um, and laugh at the jokes that you don't normally find funny. Things like, like yeah. depending on what you know, what what's the purpose of it? If it's medically induced, it could be like I, I was I was reading something up when we were talking about when I was researching this a little bit was like medically induced uh, medical marijuana could be used for cancer patients, specifically those that don't have appetites because they don't feel well, like they feel sick all the time. But this would in, induce hunger in them, the munchies, yeah. right. uh, <laughs> but specifically to get them to eat because they just don't feel like eating. But sometimes doctors can prescribe it for that reason. Like I was like, oh, interesting. So those are like the intent. What is the intent? Yeah. There's, I mean, but. Yeah, I mean, and uh, that's actually an interesting uh, point because you have kind of two aspects of it. You have the medical and the recreational. Yeah. Um, the science surrounding the medical application of it is that yeah, you're able to refine all these byproducts and you're, you're even able to isolate the thing that makes you hungry, the thing that gives you exactly. the high, that you're able to extract mm -hmm. these different chemicals, yeah. medical uh, chemicals. Um, but alongside that, you have a huge market for recreational marijuana. So, um, I, and this is a while ago that I read that um, the recreational marijuana that you get now has orders of magnitude more THC in it than... Yes. <laughs> what our, you know, uncles and aunts were smoking in the in 70s. the sixties, yeah, sixties yeah. <laughs> and seventies. That um, because you have um, kind of a medical impetus to, um, you know, make this stuff more powerful, make it more medically potent, and that's translating over into the the recreational side. That the stuff that kids are just taking a puff of to watch Netflix or to w whatever whatever listen to music or yeah. whatever hmm. experience they want to kind of. Uh, <laughs> change um, that yeah that it's it, it's increasingly problematic if if it's becoming that much more potent if it's um, yeah follow, following this medical trend and in in that case too I would suggest that maybe you would in to finalize that I would say if you were just planning on smoking a little bit and watching Netflix and then a fire happens what happens? Are you able to make the right decisions quickly? <clears throat> are you good? Like, you're going to run out of the house, but what happens if you had a baby in the room uh, or, like, a child? Are you going to be able to think about those things? The same reason Absolutely. it's not, like, yeah. I'm just going to get drunk and watch Netflix. That's still not allowed in the Catholic Church, yeah. right? I mean, that's still not... It's, you can have a drink and watch Netflix, but not get yeah. drunk and watch Netflix, not get drunk and play Call of Duty. Yeah, and what, what do those activities... What, what does uh, drinking um, alone watching TV or what does, you know... Uh, smoking pot add to that experience of, of watching Netflix or yeah. um, is it uh, are you subduing reality are you like are, mm -hmm. are you having a richer fuller kind of more humanizing experience of what you're watching or what you're doing um, and then it opens opens up to like a bigger question of, of what leisure itself like what, what exactly. should we be doing like if, if, if this is you know you know the height of our expression that we're <clears throat> yeah so just kind of like so using it Having a drink doesn't dull your faculties. Having a lot does. So, like, don't get drunk. You can have a drink, but don't get drunk. You can't ever just do a little bit of drugs. It will always impede on your faculties. Yeah. I'm going to give you a quote from Pope Francis. Love it. And you give me your comment on it, okay? <clears throat> this is the Pope said about drugs and alcohol. He says, I would reaffirm what I have stated on another occasion. No to every type of drug use. It's as simple as that. But to say this no, one has to say yes to life, to love, to others, to education, and to greater job opportunities. 
And if we say yes to all these things, there will be no room for illicit drugs, for alcohol abuse, for other forms of addiction. I love it. Yeah. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, that's great. Um, uh, yeah, it echoes what uh, Pope Benedict said as well about that. Um, he's talking about kind of art and poetry and literature and like the, our sort of like higher, um, higher experiences that the things that people are looking for in kind of <laughs> these illicit substances is just kind of a, a redirection or a short circuiting of that, of that impulse. We are, we are made for higher things or we're made. Yeah. And I think that also is something important to say that we are made in the image and likeness of yeah. God, right? Temples of the Holy Spirit. And so to treat our, to treat our bodies like that. We can say that for lots of things, right? Yeah, for sure. And uh, obviously people struggle with, uh, some people struggle with the alcohol or drug use or other things in excess too. I mean, I don't get this gut from, uh, <laughs> from a diet, yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, but we are made in the image and likeness of God. And I think to respect that, uh, the dignity that God has given us also is why we don't want to alter our reality, yeah. right? That there are greater things that we can put our focus on, greater things that we can use with our talents, our time, all and, those different things. And if you're using drugs, alcohol, these other things to try to patch a hole or to do that, you're, you're not doing the right thing, right? Yeah. There, there is a way to get fulfillment in life without using drugs, alcohol, all those other types of things that you could do. Like, go back to your faith. There is happiness there. There is, God wants you to be whole. And sometimes that whole is using him. Like, he'll fill that hole in your life. You know what I mean? I think that's beautiful. And I think that's <laughs> where we're going to stop. This was a good discussion. And maybe we have to come back to it yeah. and talk a little more about well, it. Because we didn't even get into things about uh, addictions or, or drug trafficking or all those different things. I don't yeah, know, yeah. you know, but I think a great topic to talk on the end of our Victoria Day weekend as yeah. we're back to a new week now. And so uh, thanks for the discussion. Yep. You have final uh, word there? I was going to say, enjoy your campfires, but not the bongs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have one beer or two beers. Yeah, have, well, yeah. Not the case. That's enjoy right. the oxygen. Yeah. Enjoy the oxygen. Exactly. <laughs> the fresh air. Yeah. And uh, if you think that extra beer is too much for you, send one my way. Okay. Uh, thanks for joining us on this episode of The Catholic Buzz. Uh, if you have questions or comments, email them to thecatholicbuzzpodcast at gmail.com. For Josh Sullivan and Matt Van Milligan, I'm Father Daniele, and we'll see you next time on The Catholic Buzz.